Good evening, people. How are you out there? This is Father Saunders. I'm accompanied by my son, Roderick, and my son, Brandon, two of my six children. And today, we're going to talk about next-gen gaming. Uh, PS4, Microsoft Xbox One, and currently out right now, the Nintendo Wii U. So let's just dig right into it here. i got some notes here, so I'm going to look down. All right, let's talk about what uh, digital distribution. Let's talk about that first. I think right now digital distribution is going to gain popularity as it is easier for someone to just sit there and download something as opposed to getting in their car, going to the store, paying money, coming back home. However, I do believe that the savings on digital distribution needs to be passed on to us, the customers. For example, you're saving on the manufacturing of the product, the plastic casing of the product, or which includes the plastic casing of the product, the actual artwork on the product, the shrink rack, shrink rack, shrink rack, uh, hey. the shrink wrap of the product, uh, the artwork, the booklet, which is pretty much not even there anymore, it's just two pages, and uh, the shipping of that uh, said game to any retailer store in any overhead that they might charge for putting said game in their store. Now, <coughs> when we're online and we look at digital downloads at the same time that a retail version of the game comes out, it says $59.99, just like the retail version of the game. Well, how is it right to charge the same amount for a copy in which you get all the things that I said digital distribution doesn't have, then get then save on all that. In my opinion, you should be saying if you're saving on all those things I just said, it shouldn't be more than say forty bucks, maybe even less. Why are those savings not being passed down to us, the customers? You're giving it to us. You're giving it to us. I, I can understand paying for the convenience. I get that, but is it worth sixty dollars, as compared to an actual physical copy with the case, artwork, shrink wrap, the manual, the actual physical disc? No, it's not. That's crap. We should be saving money on digital distribution. A lot of money, at least twenty bucks. Um, all right, what, what do you guys think about that? Mm. Yes. You don't know. Yeah. Just kind of indifferent. Yeah. Kind of go with the flow. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Go ahead and look at the camera. Here. Yes. Do you agree with what I'm saying? Anything to add at all? I believe what they're doing is fine. Xbox One needs a fix. Xbox One, what? What? It's awesome. No, it's awesome. It's no. It's okay, well, let's talk about the Xbox One. What, uh, you guys, I, I introduced you guys both to what they were going to do wrong at E3, which is all over the web, it's all over the news, everybody knows, I don't need to beat a dead horse here. However, what is kind of recent is they reversed those policies, <coughs> some of them, some of them, uh, in an effort, in my opinion, to get the sales back that they knew that they lost with the pre-order sales of the PS4. Uh, being far so far ahead. Now, what do you guys think about them being able to have those policies in place, which to recap, is going to have an online check-in every 24 hours, and if you did not, to my understanding, you'd have one hour to play that game offline before it was shut off until you checked in online again. No used games, which means that uh, if you had a game that was going to be tied to your console and you would not be able to trade and give, sell, lend to a friend or whatever. Um, they change those policies after seeing that they're getting their butt stopped in the uh, pre-sales department. What do you guys think about them being able to reverse that so easily with a patch? They can just add it back in. I'm going to speak up here, son. They can just add it back in. They can just add it back in. Uh, I agree. What do you think, son? I know. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, Angry Joe, on the Angry Joe Show, which I, I may or may not provide a link down there. If you just search up Angry Joe Show, you'll find his channel. Made some really good points. 
on the initial reveal. Also had an interview with Major Nelson from Xbox, who kind of got on his case and said, are you a programmer? Then I guess it's kind of a bold thing to say that it would be simple to switch it from that back to not having that uh, in reference to those policies. And sure enough, that's what happened. They, they came out and announced that with a patch, when you buy the Xbox One, they were going to remove those policies, which is kind of funny because it actually was that easy. Uh, but it is cause for concern because if they can add that on there and take it away that simply with just a patch, what's to say that that might not happen again or they may not implement them again? Because as you know, on terms of service issues, Microsoft is allowed to change whatever they need as they see fit. Um, the fact that they were going to <coughs> implement those policies in the first place, I believe, was crap to begin with. It limited your options. I'm not even an Xbox uh, video game console player. My, my, my sons are here, and I support that because I support gaming. And what affects one console, regardless of if I play it or not, can potentially affect all platforms, so we all need to care. What, uh, what I don't agree with is the fact that those policies were going to be implemented in the, fir in the first place. The fact that they had, because I'm a man of principle, the fact that they had that implemented in the first place and they're going to go through with all those policies, which if you don't know what those policies are, again, I'm not going to recap. Uh, you can easily go ser search online for those. Um, it, it, it makes me very nervous as a gamer. Even if that's something that is going to be the future, you cannot shove it down someone's throat and say, accept this as it is. Especially when you're a gamer like myself, who's 34 years old and has been gaming since the Atari 2600. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work. So, and it's a hundred dollar higher price point. And I also agree with Angry Joe on his show with with uh, in her, the post interview that he had with Major Nelson. Um, it's almost like they took their their little piece, like their trophy, from saying, "Okay, fine, we heard you. We're going to give you these options back, but we're going to take this back. You can't have that. That's mine." And that's in regards to the family share plan. Don't do that. And uh, which I think that's exactly what they did. They're pissed off. They didn't get what they wanted. We're going to take this. Okay. Here comes the wife. Hey, wife. Are we being too loud? Uh, anyways, um, it's, it's just I don't know. It's not a good period for Xbox owners at this point. Uh, even though that they did reverse those, that's a good point. But did they reverse it because us, the gamers, hun, were live? Did they reverse it? You want to say something? Can we hear in the picture? The task that starts Monday. Can we hear the picture? Four time points. Hun, can you wait one second? Okay. Here is the wife. Bend down. Bend down. Bend down so we can see your face. Bend down so we can see your face. Look, I have four arms. <laughs> okay, forgive all this, YouTubers. This is what happens when you have six children and a wife. Okay. All right, the tasseling. Talk to him about it in a little bit. I have four arms. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So where were we? And I have your shirt. Um, hon, we need to get back to this. Okay, and I have your shirt laying over your bed. So that it will dry out. Right? Okay. That's why I have it waiting. Okay. Okay. You guys want to come up and have a snack? You can just do that. No, we're busy at this time. Please leave. All right. I'll let you hunt up. Please leave. Go away. <laughs> All right. Quit. <laughs> Go away. All right. So, uh, with the Xbox okay. One, going back to it, that was your fault, by the way. It's your fault. It's your fault. Like no. Xbox is full. Xbox is full. Xbox is full. I don't care about this live showing up in there. Uh, let's just move on. All right, more, more on that later. Possibly. Okay, so many. Uh, oh, overall. Yeah, whatever. Overall, Sony had a good presentation, and they really stuck it to Microsoft as far as E3 goes. Was saying we're not going to do any of this stuff. We 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 didn't agree to any of this stuff. And we're gonna make uh, we're gonna make you guys um, 
you know, pretty much put your foot in your own mouth. And they came in at $100 cheaper. What a lot of people don't seem to be talking about is that the PS4 is going to require, as you know, an online feed. This isn't for the PlayStation Plus like it is now, but just to go online with your buddies, an online feed. It's almost like they they did a great PR campaign thing, put all those things on there so you would forget about the fact that they added this. Now, do I think they should still keep the PS Plus option? Hell yes. If you want to pay for it, cool. But the other options, like just going online, should be free. It's absolute crap that they would charge for that. It's just going online. Okay, we're already charged for that. It's called paying for your internet service provider, which I pay 40 bucks a month for. Why do I need to pay five more dollars just to play with my sons or somewhere around the world? Okay, it's also $60 a year. For PS4? To go online on the PS4, you have to pay an online fee. Same as Xbox. For Same as Xbox is now. The PlayStation has an online free network now, but it's going to be paid for now. PlayStation 3 also. No! PlayStation 4. I'm not confusing you. Alright, open up your mind. Okay, anyways, I think that you need to get on the forums. You need to let Sony know that that's not acceptable. PS Plus, yes. Pay for it, cool. Just to go online with your buddies, just just regular, when the PS3 already does it now for free? No. That should not happen. And a lot of people are overlooking that fact because they were able to masquerade that with all the you know, bravado that they had had on making Microsoft look bad. So moving on. Nintendo. This is kind of a sore subject for me because I my roots are with Nintendo and Atari. That's how I started was with Nintendo and Atari. And uh, honestly, are you guys going to talk or you can leave the room? Sorry. Fine, okay. Honestly, with Nintendo, like I said, it's a soft spot, it's a sore spot. I love the NES, still have it, still works. I love the SNES, still have it, still works. And I love the Nintendo 64, still have it, still works. What I didn't like was every single system that came after that. Absolutely, I did not like it. I did not think that... I think they forgot about everybody, all their fans. Fans. I think that they forgot about the fans who made them what they are today, which is people like myself being 34 years old. They, 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 they forgot about it. They forgot about us. They did. Because if they, would, if they would not have forgotten about us, they would have continued to do what they're doing now and added more adult-oriented content, or get more of those third-party uh, third exclusives, or have different killer uh, IPs outside of Mario, Metroid, and Zelda. Because to me, those games, while still good, while I've had a ton of fun with them, a lot of fun with them, I'm not a teenager anymore. Okay, I'm 34. I don't want to play Zelda anymore. I don't want to play Metroid anymore. I don't want to play Super Mario Brothers anymore. That stuff needs to die. It was damn good while it lasted, but it needs to go away. They need to, excuse me, come up with something else. They have to. You can't just depend on that and keep your core audience who was there with you when you started. Since your inception, you can't. You went with the casuals on the Wii. It was something new, innovative, cool. Everybody and their mother was buying up Wiis. Okay, you can find them on the shelves, all that stuff. But when it comes down to it, it's just a glorified door stopper or paperweight that collects dust. Everybody I know who has all consoles or just that one says that that one gets the least amount of play. It just sits there and it has for the past couple of years whereas their Sony's and their Xboxes uh, continue to get played. So they went with this casual. Now all those casuals are moving on to the mobile market whether it's uh, apps. iOS apps you know, uh, iPhones, iPads, what have you. And uh, because of that, Nintendo's, they're seeing that now. They're seeing their decline in sales. They're seeing their decline in all these things. And they're like, oh, please come back. We need something. Please come back. We've got adult-oriented. We've got good content. We've got hardcore games or what have you. They're, they're, they're begging for our business back. Because I think this is the first year or two that Nintendo's ever been in the red. They've never been in the red before as far as I'm 
as far as I'm tracking. If, if I'm wrong on that, please correct me in the comment section below. Um, they, they, they've really messed up the past couple of generations. It's hard for me to say that because I was such a diehard Nintendo fan for a long time and had so much fun with them. But I grew up, and they didn't. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Um, I'm looking down here because I want to check my notes here and see if I covered everything I wanted to uh, cover here. Um, PC gaming. Here, here's my thing. PC gaming can be damn fun. I don't do it a lot myself um, because there's so many different potential problems that can arise when playing PC games where I know that <clears throat> if I have a console game I can go to anyone around the world who has that same console put that game in and I know it's gonna work it's gonna play no matter what there's no there's no tweaking of any type of settings or anything else to make it work now with PCs because they're so diverse because there's so many different setups you might have to tweak a ton of things or it might not even run it might constantly crash to your desktop due to the fact that your computer's not powerful enough to run it. Um, but regardless of that, just because I'm not a PC gamer doesn't mean that I don't care about the PC gaming world. I care because we all have something in common. It doesn't matter what platform you're on. We are all gamers. And I care about what happens to PC gaming or Xbox or Nintendo, even though primarily I'm a Sony PlayStation gamer, because what happens to one platform can happen to all, good or bad. It can potentially spread to all platforms. That's why you need to care. That's one thing we all have in common is that we like to game. So you can drop the whole diehard supporter fanboyism of each relative platform because we're all gamers. Done story. That's it. Um, the reason why I got away from PC gaming, and I wasn't a big PC gamer to begin with, is uh, in 2006 I bought my first PC. It was Oblivion or first PC, and my first PC game was Oblivion, and it kept crashing <coughs> crashing de desktop every time I would enter Oblivion. Now, that game came out in 06, my first computer was 06, no matter what, no matter what kind of computer you have, generally speaking, it should at least play, and I even had the graphics and everything turned down, I, I wanted uh, the best performance instead of the, the best graphical uh, presentation, and it still crashed. Now, you would think that all that would at least be able to play, at least on that year. Any game from 2006 should be able to play on a computer you bought new that year, and it didn't. And that's what turned me off from it. Um, yeah, you can call me ignorant for not looking at the tech specs or can my computer run it type thing, but in 06, I really didn't know a whole lot, you know, about uh, gigahertz, you know, memory, blah, 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 but I just assumed that any game from that same year that I bought a computer from on that same year that was brand new would just work, no problems. And it didn't. But I am a big PC gamer as far as my history because Oregon Trail was was awesome. I love Baldur's Gate. Any of you out there, uh, Bioware fans, which Bioware's kind of dropped the ball lately, they really have. Uh, as a matter of fact, they kiss my ass right now. I'm really upset with them. But Baldur's Gate was a, was a gem. Oregon Trail, of course, was a gem. Uh, I, I have a couple of uh, Star Wars games compacted in one disc that are pretty cool. What, uh, Battlefront, uh, Republican Commando, Nice of the Old Republic. But uh, so there is good. There's there's fantastic PC games. I just upgraded my PC. I have an XPS 8700 now uh, from Dell. That uh, that's brand new this year. Uh, I'm looking to possibly get into PC gaming just a little bit more. Maybe Torchlight some type of dungeon crawler because I think this generation uh, is lacking in the dungeon crawler field but anyways I'm looking into that more on that uh, some other time but Microsoft when they switch their policies getting back to that I would love to agree with Angry Joe and in a sense he's right both indirectly and directly that we did it we won we got him to change their policy we spoke out we hit the forums we hit comment sections you know whatever the case is to uh, let them know that hey, we're not gonna we're not gonna take this. This is, this is crap. But at the same time, it's not. It's because we voted with our wallets, as the popular saying goes now, that those changes took place. So indirectly, indirectly, 
I would love to say it's just because we voiced our opinion as gamers that they changed it. But in reality, because they're a business, and a business, their, their number one thing is to make profits. The reason they changed is they saw that those pre-work sales and whatnot were not where they wanted them to be. So because we spoke our minds and relative to that spoke with our wallets, those changes took place. So where I'd like to be, I would like to believe that was just us speaking as gamers, which is the way that it should be. It, it is with the wallets, it's with the money. I don't agree with it. I hate that fact. I, I can't stand it. But uh, that's that, that's the truth. Uh, to kind of finish here, uh, you guys got anything to add so far? Like, explain a little bit about those people that want to bring back that crap. Yeah, Xbox One. Oh, okay, okay. We can talk about that. Uh, speak up, speak here, Sean. You talk a little bit about the fact that uh, I viewed over uh, Alpha Omega Sin's channel, which that's a great channel. If you're a gamer, visit his channel, Alpha Omega Sin and Rich of Review Tech USA. Another great channel, and Angry Joe. I like all three channels. They're all they're all great channels. If you need gaming news, visit those channels. Uh, I, I learned through them that there is a change.org petition going out where supposedly Xbox fans want to reinstate the original old policies. So, Brandon, go ahead. What did you want to say about that? Speak up, speak clearly, speak, uh, lean in if you need to, whatever. This is our first video. Bear with us here. <laughs> all right, there are some people that wanted to bring back all that crap. I don't know why. Okay. I so, didn't say it, though. Well, my son's right, and because they're here, I won't really start to cuss a lot, which is what I want to do right now. But because my son's here, I'm not going to. And if you see me alone, you're going to see when I'm passionate about something, I'm going to start dropping F-bombs. But uh, he's right. Why on God's green earth would you want to reinstate those policies? You, you got those taken away for a reason. You're a gamer. You don't want those things there. Those things restrict your options, it limits your options, it alienates you as a customer pretty much saying piss on you and your service. Okay, we don't care if you've been an Xbox fan for 10 years, we're taking all this away. Oh, you don't have reliable internet or good internet? Well, too bad. Stick with an Xbox 360. That, that's what they're saying. It's truth. There's no other way around it. That's the truth. Uh, the fact that there's people out there that want to reinstate it and had a petition for it, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you can't cure stupid. That, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Um, along with Next Gen Gaming, I, I want to kind of wrap it up here. Some things that I want to see go that I don't agree with as a gamer right now that I'm very pissed off about. I don't care how well it's done, and the best that I've seen done is Borderlands, which I'm a huge fan of. More Borderlands 1 than Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2 is still a great game. Borderlands 1 is still where it's at for me. They need to get rid of paid DLC completely. All of it. Scrapped. Get away with it. It's done. No more microtransactions. No more paying for skins for your weapon or your character. Uh, no more paying for difficulty levels. You know, none of that crap. Do you know... I miss the times when all that was free. You know, you beat a game, you unlock new characters, maybe extensions to a story, new difficulty modes, and it was called every other generation. Every generation before this did that. If you had a bunch of DLC that you wanted to add on, it was called a new game or the next in the series. There wasn't any of this paid DLC crap. All right, I, I don't agree with it at all. It's, it's all garbage. And as long as we still buy it, they're going to create it. It's all bad. It's all bad news. None of it's good. $60 is more than enough for any game, period. And most games now, by the time you buy every single piece of DLC, you're spending almost another $60, even with season passes, which don't get me started on that because season passes are a freaking joke, too. It's, it's all BS. Oh, well, we'll give you $10 off on all these DLC packs if you buy it now. So you want me to pay more money on something that I haven't even seen yet? Go piss yourself because I'm not doing it. All right, I don't care. I don't care if it's good or not because if you think about it, how much DLC do all of you really spend playing? 
on top of the core game. I spend most of my time playing the core game. The DLC is fun for a couple of days, maybe. And when it's done, it, I mean, really, how much is it worth your money? Is it worth $10 for, you know, a map pack or $15 for a map pack uh, or a little bit extra couple hours of content? And how many times are you going to replay that as opposed to the core game? Generally speaking, at least with me, not enough to, to warrant paying more money than 60 bucks, which is the most any game should ever cost ever. If you want DLC, DLC should be done and given to us for free as thanks and appreciation for being a lo loyal customer. Well, then you get those people that don't have online and they can't get it. Very good point. As my son Brandon said, you get people, you have to have online to get the DLC. And not everybody has online. So since everybody doesn't have online, you alienate that geographic of customer. And all you're doing is pissing them off enough to say, well, if you're going to be like that, screw you. Well, Father Saunders, you don't have to buy it. You don't have to spend the money for it. You, you still have the vanilla game, but you're still not getting the full experience. As long as there is even another little piece of something of that game out there, you're not getting the full experience. You're not. That's a fact. If I have the core game and somebody and it comes out with some DLC, even if it's just say one weapon, and that and that person gets that one weapon, he's got more of a full experience out of that game than I do. That's a fact and a story. DLC needs to go away. They are nickel and diming us because they're think that we we are stupid enough to keep giving into it. Paying for difficulty levels, come on. Give me a break. Capcom is the worst at this generation at DLC. Arguably, they're definitely in the top. EA, of course. EA, Golden Turtle Award, two years in a row. Yeah, you, you definitely deserve that one. Okay, so take that award with pride because you are a Golden Turd. Um, yeah, they are. Microtransactions need to go away. They need to go away. Who wants to pay money for an outfit? I mean, really. Okay, pre-order sales, pre-order bonuses need to go away, period, and a story. Uh, you know, the re the retailer's uh, way of trying to get you to buy from their store. Oh, come buy from Target. Come buy from Walmart, what have you. Uh, if you buy from us, we'll give you this item. You go to a different store, we'll give you this item. Well, then you're not getting a complete experience right off the bat because if you don't buy at said store you don't get that particular item. So if you don't buy from every single store that offers a pre-order sale, then you're not getting the complete experience because they've reached in and nitpicked a weapon or a skin or something like that out of the finished game to entice you to go to said retailer to buy it. You're not getting the full experience right off the bat when you buy the game anymore because they've taken something out of it right when you buy it. It's not complete. It's absolute crap. Um, wow. Well, <laughs> no, okay, no DLC, no microtransactions, no pre-order sales. Uh, can you guys add anything to that? I know there's more. I'm just forgetting it right now. I know there's more that I wanted to say on that. Anything else you guys can think of? No? Forgive my two sons here. I'm just as nervous as they are. This is my first video ever on YouTube. I just want to have them in here because they actually make me feel comfortable. So I appreciate that, boys. I think we're going to stop there. Um, this is Father Saunders, and that has been your wake-up call for this evening.